Happy Friday everyone. Welcome back to another video. My name is Tawanda and I'm the Migraine Crafting Diva. And on this channel, I do decorating on a budget, DIYs, and hauls with a sprinkle of migraine enlightenment. And today's video is a part of a playlist of the Signs of Fall video with a group of lovely crafters. And um, we'll go into more details during the video. I hope you enjoy. Happy Friday. So we're gonna go ahead and get started with DIY number one. And my stencil says fall for Jesus, he never leaves, which I thought was like the perfect um, fall sign. And then I have the, one of these Dollar Tree um, faux cutting boards. And I'm gonna use some of the Waverly plaster paint and also some of the acrylic light brown paint. So I'm just gonna basically just do like a dry brush, not perfect at all. Um, of the Waverly plaster all over the um, the cutting board here and um, once I have it like I want it then I'll go back and then I'll go ahead and start to add the light brown um, paint onto um, just certain areas just a little dry brush onto certain areas of the cutting board So here I'm just going to go ahead and start adding the light brown paint onto the um, cutting board and I'll just, you know, place it in certain in different areas until I'm happy with it. And then once I have that complete, I'm going to take some of the jet black paint, the Christmas tree paint and um, blue bayou and some baking soda and I'm going to mix all of those paints together because I want it to be like a black but I want it to have like an undertone of the gray and the green which it actually kind of just looks black when um, you see me put the stencil on so once I have it once this is completely dry I'll go ahead and mix that paint mixture up and then I will um, take my stencil and just kind of place it how I want it I'm also going to go around the edges of this cutting board to um, make to have it match that one side. I left the other side the way that it was originally was because I actually like um, the sign on the other side also. So I figured I can just kind of flip them back and forth. The only thing I will probably end up doing on the that one is with the glitter. I don't really like that too much. So I'll probably add some of um, maybe some brown paint or something just to um, take some of the glitter off where it's not so glittery or to kind of just like not have it so bright. But other than that, I like the way that that sign it looks. So I'm going to just do the back side and then I'll just have a double sided sign. So here I am just going ahead and going to, um, like I said, I'm going to mix up these three paints together, the jet black, the um, blue bayou, and the um, Christmas tree with the bacon soda. So I'll go ahead and get those mixed up and then I will be ready to start stenciling my stencil onto my sign. So now that I have my mixture all mixed up, I'm going to go ahead and take my stencil and just kind of, I'm just trying to figure out where I'm going to put all of my words because it is a large sign and I'm trying to put every, all of the words off of the stencil onto the sign. So here I am just trying to place everything just so that I can make sure that it's even. And um, I'll go ahead and use some painter's tape and then I'll go ahead and get started to stencil. And for each section that I do, I'm gonna do, um, go over it twice with the um, paint and baking soda mixture. So um, yeah, so we'll go ahead and get started. So I would just like to um, say that I am so excited to be a part of this playlist, um, The Signs of Fall, which is hosted by Amanda from Six Kids and a Glue Gun, Brenda from Rustic and Lace DIYs, and Chantel from Crafty Hints. And the link to the playlist is listed down in my description box. 
And if you go over and watch any of their videos, just let them know that Tawanda from the Migraine Craft and Diva sent you over. And if you're watching my video and you're coming over from one of their channels, welcome. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you enjoy my video. And my name is Tawanda and I am the Migraine Craft and Diva. And on my channel, I do decorating on a budget, DIYs and hauls with a sprinkle of migraine enlightenment. And I call myself the Migraine Craft and Diva because I suffer from chronic migraines. And I actually use crafting as a way to um, de-stress myself and to distract myself from my migraines. So, um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed the video. And to all of my new subscribers and my current subscribers, Thank you, thank you, thank you for always watching my videos every Sunday. I do greatly appreciate you. Thank you. So here I am adding the second row of words to the um the to my sign here. And I am, like I said before, I'm gonna give each um section two coats of the paint mixture and I'm gonna use my heat gun in between. And as you can see here, a couple of, I have a couple of areas, especially the end with never, um, where I um, went a little overboard with the paint. So I will go back and, um, or here I'm using, this is a white chalk paint marker that I had purchased at Hobby Lobby. So I'm just trying to go and go on the outsides and just kind of straighten it up so that it make it look a lot, lot to make it look more more nicer or actually neater than um, what it did. But that actually just kind of made it look a little bit worse and it looked gray. So here I'm using my white marker from Hobby Lobby. And it really, that, I mean, it's not my white marker, my white pen, excuse me, from the Hobby Lobby. But that really didn't do anything. So I went ahead and just moved on to um, the word Jesus. And I'm going to off give it two coats of the paint mixture and then I'll come back over to um, those two letters that I was trying to fix. So the N and never and the A and leave. I'm going to go back and just take my little, um, I have a little paintbrush that I actually use um, when I'm making clay molds and I actually ended up taking that paintbrush out of the um, using that paintbrush for um, to fix the A and the N. So I'm just taking some of the plaster paint and just, just going around it just to try to make it look a lot neater. And then I'll go back and add some of the brown. And um, it actually looks pretty good. Um, it look, actually looks like I didn't really make any mistakes after I um, went over it several times just to kind of get it the way that I wanted it to be. And then, um, you know, with changing, doing the mixtures and just trying to get it like I want it and making it, making, and making sure that it's blending in correctly. And um, it actually turned out really nice. So, but yeah, um, yeah, it looks, it's looking really good. So um, once I have that done, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the leaves. So I'm going to put um, three leaves on to this sign. So I'm going to use the folk art um, yellow paint. So it's actually the folk art medium yellow. I'm going to use the um, Waverly pumpkin and I'm also going to use terracotta. So what I, what I first did was I took some of my black paint mixture and I went ahead and did that first. And then I went back and added the, um, the pumpkin first, I believe. And then I added the, um, the medium yellow. And then I believe I added the terracotta and then I used my heat gun, dried it. And then I went back and I added, um, another one of the leaves. So now I add three to the end. So yeah, there it is. And I think the sign turned out so nice. Um, and it's like, the I think it's like the perfect sign to put in your kitchen. So then I took some of the gingham ribbon and um, just tied a little bow at the end. Well, not a bow, but just like a little hanger at the end. And that is it for this DIY. And I absolutely love the way that it turned out. Let me know what you think. And let me know which one of these DIYs is your favorite. So we're going to move on to DIY number two. And um, here I have a calendar from the Dollar Tree, the um, Pathways calendar. 
and um, I have this picture frame that I purchased from the thrift store for 50 cents and then I also have this mold some Dawes clay and um, I'm going to use the Waverly plaster and the acrylic light brown paint so first I'm going to take the um, picture frame and I am going to paint it um, plaster and then once I have it completely, once it's done and I have it dry, I'll go ahead and start to um, trace the glass onto the calendar page to get the proper size for the picture frame. And, um, and I'll decide which part of the um, picture I'm gonna actually use in this DIY. So here I am just um, getting it all painted and it, it just looks so much nicer. And I actually went to the thrift store and I purchased um, quite a few frames. I paid like $7, to, like a little over $7. And I, um, most of the, all of their frames in this one section were um, 50 cents a piece. So I uh, picked up quite a few of them. So here I have the picture out of the calendar. So I'm just going to take the glass and try and figure out which, um, so which uh, part of the picture I'm going to use. So here I'm just going to use this piece and here I'm trying to decide how I'm going to put my stencil, I mean my mold, excuse me, onto the um, calendar. And I'm going to go ahead and trace it out and I'll go ahead and cut it. And then um, once that com that's complete, I'm going to take the calendar piece, the picture, and I'm going to use some of the Dollar Tree um, one of the Dollar Tree glue sticks and I am going to use it onto the cardboard and adhere or attach the picture to the cardboard using the glue stick. The glue stick. So here I'm just cutting it. So this cardboard is actually the one that came with the calendar. So it's not that thick. So it was easy to cut with my scissors. So here I am just showing you the picture and which, um, what, um, section of the um, picture I decided to cut out and use and then I'll go ahead and get that attached to the cardboard and then that part of this DIY will be complete and then I'll go ahead and move on to making the molds of the deer. So I'm going to make two molds, um, two of the deer molds and when I'm using the DOS clay I'm going to add a little bit of um, the brown, the light brown paint to the clay to kind of give it a, um, some color and I didn't put a lot because I didn't want it to be too brown but I actually didn't put enough so it wasn't brown enough but you'll see um, once I have the deer molds um, complete so here I'm just um, just trying to flatten out the um, the picture onto the cardboard so there's the deer I'm going to use and I got this mold from Amazon and it's actually smaller than what I originally thought it was going to be when I ordered it and I was actually going to send it back and then when I brought these calendars home and I was looking at them and then I had the mold sitting on my desk and I thought you know what I'll just put those molds onto the calendar so I ended up just keeping them so here I'm just getting the clay ready to stick in the molds and I'll tell you, I mean, I've said this before, I am not the best at doing clay molds, but I continue to try. I guess um, practice makes perfect. I don't know when that'll happen, but um, I'll just keep practicing. And it does take me quite a while to uh, to uh, get the mold, to do the molds. Um, so here I am just move, you know, moving on along, putting the mold into putting the clay into the mold, just trying to get it done correctly. And this mold is really small. So like the legs on the deer and the antlers on the deer were kind of hard to, um, to get to do perfectly. And so, um, that's why I just keep packing it on. So I'm going to use one of the, uh, one of my, um, Cricut, uh, weaving tools, to kind of just remove some of the excess clay from around the deer. And you'll see me doing that here shortly. So I'm gonna do two deer and um, I'm gonna place them onto the picture. So I'll just let you kind of watch what I'm doing here. And there's the deer. 
And I think it, I mean, considering the fact that the legs are so skinny and the antlers are really small and the, I mean, the mold is small too. So, um, and this actually isn't a clay mold. It's actually, um, one for fondant, but this was the only one that I could find that had deer on it. So, um, I went ahead and just ordered it because I wanted to do, um, some Christmas DIYs with deer on them. And this was the only one that I could find when I ordered these. Um, but so, um, yeah. So I am just using this tool to try and remove some of that excess clay, as you can see here. And I'm gonna go ahead and make um, another one of these deer. So that I'll have two that I'm gonna place onto my picture. So here I'm just showing you what it looks like after I finish that. And then I'm gonna uh, place it onto my frame to kind of figure out proper placement of how I want to put these onto the, um, into the, onto the picture because I want it to look like the deer are um, kind of blended in but not so much blended in and it looks like they're walking across the um, the path and you know from one side of the frame to the other so here I am just using that weeding tool to remove the rest of that excess clay and um, once I have that done I'm going to use some of the I was going to use a tight bond but I could not get it was like I couldn't get it to come out, so I ended up using the um, the Dollar Tree wood glue, which worked just fine. So here I cut the deer in half, as you can see here. I'm just move, removing some more of that excess clay, and then I'm going to go ahead and add the um, the wood glue to the back of the deer. I'm going to put it all over, and then I'll go ahead and start to place those onto the picture. So here, once I have it like I want it, I'll go ahead and start adding. And I don't know what happened there, but somehow, oh, I think my battery died. So here um, I'm adding it to the wood glue to this one, this deer here, and I'm gonna go ahead and place it onto the frame or, or to the picture. And I'm gonna tell you, I mean, I like all of these DIYs that I did, but this actually is my favorite. It's like simple, but yet, I just love it. It's like woodsy. It reminds me of being up north and the seasons change and just seeing the deer. I This is like my favorite um, DIY. So here I am just adding some of the Waverly Antique Wax to the deer to kind of darken them up. And then I'm going to go behind. Um, I'm gonna, It's still going to be wet. I'm going to go ahead and use some of the um, Waverly White um wax on top of this to kind of lighten it up because I like I said I wanted it to kind of blend but not blend too much because I still wanted to be able to see the deer and I just absolutely love the way that this turned out um, let me know what you think So we are moving right along to DIY number three. So here I have a piece of cardboard I already cut out. It looks like a Frankenstein head. And I have some of these Dollar Tree flowers, a welcome sign. And then I also have this chair cover, um, the scarecrow chair cover from the Dollar Tree. And then I have a couple pieces of um, a ribbon that I already had that I was going to use for a different project, but I ended up um, using on this project instead because I didn't like it on the other project. So I'm just reusing that ribbon. So here I have placed the scarecrow pillow, co I mean a chair cover over the um, cardboard. I had already gone ahead and cut most of it, um, but then I had to, there were some areas that needed to be cut some more to. Um, make it fit properly so I'm just I went back and um, cut those areas and here I am trying to use my hand sander but I was just making a complete mess I was just making a mess so I decided I would just use tape instead so I went ahead and just taped around the edges of the cardboard and um, once I did that I took some of the plaster paint and I really should have just taken some of some of the brown paint and um, painted the top part and then painted the bottom the plaster color just to try and blend it in with the hat and the face but um, 
I did not do that. So I went ahead and like I said, I taped around the whole edges just to kind of clean it up. And then um, I taped, then I went ahead around the tape and I painted it with the Waverly. So here I was going to use the Mod Podge to um, attach the, the Scarecrow face to the cardboard. But then I decided I was just going to use hot glue because when I originally brought um, these tear covers, I um, my original plan was to make a pillowcase. I mean, a pillow, excuse me. And um, so I usually, when... I usually buy the Dollar Tree tear covers and the flags to make um, pillows for the holidays. So um, I ended up just going back and buying another one so I don't have to take this one apart because I actually have this um, scarecrow hanging on my door and my carport at the moment. So um, here I am just taking the hot glue and I'm just going to go around the edges of the cardboard and I'm going to go ahead and attach the scarecrow um, fabric to it that way and then once I have it done um, I'll go back and I'm going to braid take the um, the ribbon and I'll go ahead and give the her her hair a cup two little braids and I'm going to add the ribbon to um, the ends of her hair to give her and give her like two little um, shoestring bow, you know, bows on the ends of her hair. But here I am just taking that hot glue and I'm going around and just kind of rubbing it down so that it stays. So once I have it complete, I'm almost done here. So I almost have it complete. You can still see the, um, the cardboard in some of the areas. And I may go back and um, just paint it brown. I haven't done that yet, but I will probably go back and do that. So here I'm just braiding her hair. And I'm going to go ahead and, um, like I said, I'll take that gingham um, ribbon and I'll go ahead and tie a bow at the ends of her hair. And she, look at how she just, it looks just so good. It looks so cute. So um, I actually... Um, on my coffee bar, I have a scarecrow theme, a scarecrow theme, and I thought that I would um, use this to make as a welcome sign. So, um, and I was gonna put it inside the house, but I just decided to put it outside on the door because I just absolutely loved the way that it looked. And um, so, yeah, here I am. I am not the best bow tire, so it took me quite a while to um, get these straight. So, yeah, um, still learning. Still, um, even with doing DIYs for years, I am still learning how to do bows. I am not the best at bows at all. But um, these actually took a while, but they actually turned out pretty nice. So here I'm just cutting the little bow tails to make it a little bit more to make it look more finished and then once I have that done I'm going to go ahead and focus on I think I'm going to do the welcome first so here I'm trying to find proper placement for the welcome sign and I believe I believe I got the welcome sign from Hobby Lobby when it was like 90% off last year so here I am trying to take this pumpkin off and then I decide okay I want to use the heat gun and as you can see here it gets pretty hot and I burn a hole directly into the middle of the um the pumpkin and into the hat so i was planning on just using one of those dollar tree flowers but i ended up using two so that i could cover the burn hole that i created into um, the hat so um if you do try to remove that pumpkin if you're going to do a diy with this scarecrow i would suggest um a little bit of heat for at least the least amount of time as possible um i had it too close and i had it on there too long and then it started to burn so yeah um do as i say not as i do so here i'm just adding some hot glue to the welcome and i'm going to place that onto the top of the hat and look at how cute it is quick and easy welcome sign um yeah so this is the back of the diy so i'm going to take a piece of that gingham ribbon and I'm going to use some hot glue and some of the masking tape and to um, hold it in place.
So I'm going to cover it with a piece of masking tape and I'll put some hot glue down on top of that masking tape and I'll add some more masking tape to um, that just to make sure that it stays in place. And I, um, it's not in this DIY, but I'm also going to add some of the um, brown paper from the Dollar Tree to the back of it so that it looks more finished. And that is it for this DIY. Really cute, easy, and simple. Uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Look at how cute she is. Oh my gosh, she is so cute. So we are on to our last and final DIY, DIY number four. And this DIY um, <laughs> took a long time and I did it twice because I messed up on the first time. So here we will go ahead and get started. So I have this picture frame that I've had for many, many years. I purchased it at Kohl's, I believe. I got it on clearance for like three or four dollars. And then I have some of the Dollar Tree leather, faux leather. And I, I was deciding on if I was gonna use that like um, dark brown color or if I was gonna use the black. And then I have some Scrabble letters that I purchased from Timu a while ago. And I'm also gonna use some of the fabric um mod podge so here i am just adding the um the mod podge to the picture frame or to the glass on the frame because the glass does not come out of this frame and then i'm going to go ahead and add that brown um faux leather be because it looks like it kind of just says fall just the color of it just kind of goes well with um, my decor and then once i have it um placed on and I have it as flat as possible. I'm just going to take, um, I have this little container that I keep my Scrabble letters in. It's actually a cigar box. I'm just going to put that on top of it just to kind of hold it down. And then when it's completely dry, I'll go ahead and cut off the excess leather. Um, so once I did that, I went ahead and took these craft sticks and I went ahead and cut them. Um, and I'm, and put them in place. And then once I did that, I'm gonna go ahead and use some hot glue in place and then go ahead and just hot glue them down in place so that it'll give another border. And that actually looks really good. Um, so yeah. So once I had that, then I'll take my Scrabble letters and here I'm just showing you all of the words I'm gonna use. So originally when I was, when I first decided to do this DIY, I was gonna actually just put them down like that because I was writing down just things that reminded me of fall. Um, and I was just gonna just, just do like a, just straight lines of just words, you know, just going just straight across. And then I decided that I would just put them in like I was using, um, um, like a word puzzle. So here I am just putting all of the, um, the words on to the picture frame and I'm going to just try and position everything the way, you know, evenly. And so this is actually my second attempt at doing this DIY because I put all of the words down the first time and somehow while I was um, doing the DIY, which I kind of figured, I realized what I did was that while I was doing the DIY, because I moved the letters around so much, and actually, even with me placing the words down like I have them right now, um, as I was going them all down, I was actually changing the position of the words, and somehow I ended up leaving out the, I think I left out the K or it might have been the P and pumpkin because I was, I had moved the words around so many times instead of just leaving it like I had it that I, um, yeah, that I just misspelled the word pumpkin. And also too, I have a bad, um, habit of crafting without my glasses on. So that didn't help either, but here I am doing it again. And this DIY, um, took me about two hours to get done because I was trying to make the words really straight and I know that these little the words the letters aren't um or the um the wood pieces aren't all the same size but 
I was trying my best to get these as straight as possible. So, um, yeah, here again, um, you see I have October over there on the side and when you see the finished product, it's going to be in a completely different, um, it's going to be somewhere else. So here I am just having, placing everything how I want it. And I'm just using like little random pieces for spaces. So here I am using some of, I have the, I flipped them over upside down, the, some of the Scrabble letters to kind of make it straight to kind of um, help me with positioning um, my words. So here I'm just using that one in between just so that um, my words will be straight. And yeah, this is just how I did it. And I use the, um, oh, I can't remember what I, what this tool is called, but I'll just pop it up on the screen here. But I used that to make sure that all of my letters and words were straight. And I did that for all of the words, which took, like I said, this um, DIY took me two hours to do. Not one time, but two times. But it actually came out really nice. And I like it just as much as I did the first time. So, um, yeah, let me know what you think when you see this DIY. But I um, I really do love the way this turned out. And I'm going to do one for Christmas. I already like started writing down the words I'm going to use for Christmas. And I can't wait for you all to see um, to see this DIY. So, um, but yeah, so I'll just let you kind of sit here and watch me as I, um, do this, try and get all of these words on here straight. Yeah. <laughs> and this is, and you see here how I'm like hitting the words around. And that's another reason too, because, um, once I got past autumn, I had to move everything. I have to boot. So basically I'm moving everything around so that I can use the straight edge to, um, get my line straight. So while I'm doing that, I'm like moving everything around from the way that I originally had it. So, um, then I'll have to like start over again, but it actually still came out nice. So, and using those, um, the extra, um, letters to make it straight and to do the proper spacing is um, was a really good idea to be able to keep everything. So here I am and I'm putting the last word in October. And as you can see, October isn't where I, where it began, um, at the beginning of this DIY, it's in a completely different spot. So with that being said, um, let me know what you think about this DIY and this is going to be it for this video. And I would ask that you please go ahead and, um, click on the playlist listed below and go ahead and watch the signs of fall playlist. I would greatly appreciate it and just let them know that Tawana the Migraine Craft and Diva sent you over. And I hope you enjoyed today's video and don't forget to watch the playlist for the signs of fall. The link is in my description box. And um, like I always say, be nicer, be kinder. God will love you for it. And I hope you have a blessed day and I will see you on Sunday. Goodbye.